You're listening to episode number 68 of the Alaria Masterclass Podcast. What's going on, everybody? It's Brian Tripp. I am here in beautiful Birmingham, Alabama. So glad you decided to join us today for another episode of the Masterclass Podcast. We have a great guest right here in my little office studio that we've created that we're going to get to in just one second. Just want to make a couple of announcements. Our RIA meetings are always the second Thursday night of every single month. Go to meetup.com forward slash Alaria. It's A-L-A-R-E-I-A. So definitely check that out. At our last meeting, we had over two, we just went over the 200 uh, person mark. We're over 500 members now. Growing strong, we have the largest real estate gathering in the state of Alabama. So you definitely need to check this out. Uh, and we do quarterly workshops as well. We do quarterly three-day boot camps, workshops, whatever you want to call it. You can go and register right now at alariaworkshop.com. You can check out dates and locations and stuff like that. Again, it's A-L-A-R-E-I-A workshop.com. And I want to jump right into the guest. We have Miss Maureen McCann in the studio. How are you today, Maureen? Brian, terrific. It's great to be here. Thanks for inviting me into your show. You're very welcome. I get so excited when we get women in real estate Powerful on the show. Powerful women. Because <laughs> it's just, I think we've only had like five or six, maybe seven now. And it's, I, I always, I want to get them. There's just like, where are they? <laughs> where are they related to Birmingham? They're, they're just hard to find. So I'm glad you're here. And I know we've been kind of going back and forth with scheduling. And Maureen's just like, no, I can't do it that day, but I could do it in like three weeks. <laughs> I'm like, no, I can't do it that one day out of the whole three weeks. And they're like, well, I'll just put you off another three weeks. It just shows you how busy we both are. Very, We're very busy. That's absolutely right. So you are with Spartan Invest. First of all, tell me what's your title and what is Spartan Invest? So I am the VP of Sales and Marketing, and I'm also a co-owner and co-founder in the company. Uh, and what was the second question? <laughs> what is it? What is this thing? Oh what is Spartan Invest? Oh my gosh. So we are the premier turnkey model. So investors were built, really designed for the busy professional who wants to diversify their portfolio into uh, real estate holdings, but they just don't want to swing a hammer. They don't want to have to find the property. They really just want to collect the rent check, um, take a customer service call each month to say, hey, everything's going great or we've got a little issue here. We're going to fix it for you. Um, so we're basically just for the turnkey premier turnkey company in Birmingham that just helps people get into um, rental properties, build portfolios for long-term cash flow. So let's take it down to the very basic level for okay. just because you know we've got all you know different um, shapes and sizes of investors that listen to this. People who aren't even investing right now that may want to invest. What is because I just had this conversation on Saturday where someone who's been in real estate for 25 plus years and and he goes, when you say turnkey, what do you mean? And so what, what is it? What is turnkey? What does that mean? I get this a lot. So there's a lot of different people out there that will call themselves turnkey. How we define it really is we are the one-stop shop, the A to Z. So we're the people that we buy the properties, we renovate them, we get a tenant in, we get it performing, we get it cash flowing, and then we manage the property for our investor. It's fully integrated, fully vertical. Um, it is really the, the uh, we don't farm anything out, third party, everything is kept in house. So that's how we define turnkey. Sure. And it's a, it's a property that's rent ready, um, a tenant's in, it's cash flowing, and we're selling that to the investor. And you don't sell that until it's all those things that you just described, already cash flowing, already already tenant in place. I would say most of the time we do, it's, uh, there are some times that we close without a tenant in place, but we're really good about getting the property tenanted. So right. it usually takes us about 33 days to, on wow. average to get the property rented. That doesn't seem like that long. No, because we're pre-marketing the property, right? So we're gotcha. not waiting until it's 100% finished. We have really, we have two full-time leasing agents that right. work um, seven days a week. They show properties from 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. We're not the type of organization that's going to, um, hey, drive by, text them the address, and we'll send you a lockbox code and let, let yourself in. We're the actual, um, we've got two, the two full-time leasing agents that are hustling out there. They caravan people together. They wow. create the urgency. They create the, hey, I gotta get my application in right away wow. if I really want this house. Maureen, you said the word premier. You're the premier turnkey company. Yes. How, how does one measure that? And, and, what, and what makes you say that you're the premier? So when you look at what we do compared to what other people are doing, it, even across the country, not even so much in the state, it's, you know, you don't find too many people that are doing everything that we are from the buying, the renovating, the tenanting, the selling, uh, and the managing. You'll find people that, fragments of that, or farm other, or other parts of that out. Um, and I think that whenever you, and I'm not saying that those models cannot work, but 
my company, uh, the owners and I, we have a vested interest in the long-term performance of that property. Yeah. And some other times, if you're just in a, some other companies or even like just the, the affiliate marketers, right? They're basically out there um, looking for the, the buyer. They're matching up with someone like me, the seller, and they're taking a fee. So their interest stops at the time of the, the sale that takes place. Whereas if I was in just a transactional business, I would only care about the transaction until I got my cash back out and I'm done. Right. But that's where my relationship starts with the, the investor. It's ongoing because I actually care about how their property performs long term because guess what? If they get cash flow, I can charge my 9% and everyone's happy. So, yeah, no, that sounds awesome. And so Maureen, you've been, so how long has Spartan been around, Spartan does? Five years Five now, years. yeah. So five years strong, um, in my opinion, probably the best, because I've seen them all, and it's probably the best. I love the product that you guys put out on the back end for the investors. I, I get people, just being the face of this thing, I actually get a lot of people that contact me about turnkey investment properties. We wrote a glowing article about you guys one time. We know, we put Thank it on you. our blog. We think that, um, we do, I do believe that the product that you guys put out is probably the best I've seen from a turnkey standpoint. And you've been, you've been in this for five years, so you obvi obviously know the Birmingham area very, very well. Yes. And just a little teaser there, we're going to talk about, we're going to get Maureen's opinion of where Birmingham's been, not only where it's been, but where it's headed and different areas, different pockets of places that we should be buying properties <laughs> if we're buying for long term. But first, before we get to that, I want to learn a little bit more about you. Sure. Marina, where, how did you even get started in real estate? And how did you get to Birmingham? <laughs> all right, I'm going to have to short this story a little bit. Okay. So, um, all right, so everything started for me in 2008. I think that was a pivotal year for many, and well, many Americans. Um, that was a year where the economy downturned, the housing market crashed, and that's where I had my wake-up call. At that time, I was still a W-2 wage earner and um, thought that just maxing out my 401k was the best way to invest. And my fidelity statements up until that point were always in the black. So I was like, God, oh, this is great. It's like, you put a little money in and it just right. keeps growing and everything's awesome. Until it wasn't, right? So then you've got the statements coming, the quarterly statements that are coming that are in the red. Yeah. And it was like quarter one red, quarter two red, quarter three red. I'm like hemorrhaging. I, I'm like, this has to stop. And so um, the wake up call was one, I was in my late 30s at that time. And I realized that I still had time to recover. Um, the losses from what I lost in the market. And I lost nearly 50%. It's a pretty yeah. big wake up call. Yes. And I also had the opportunity to look at my parents who also lost money, uh, but they were in their late 60s, so yes. they didn't have a lot of time to That's recover. Right. So my wake up was if I'm not doing anything different than they are, and I'm just hoping on the whims of the market by the time I'm ready to retire that it's going to be on an upswing. And that's not a good investment strategy. So I figured out that the majority of people that have wealth, they portion a significant percent of their portfolio with real estate. Yeah. And at that point I had zero experience. So I'm gonna really condense the story now, right? Okay. So uh, invested in a bunch of education, uh, went to Fortune Builders, went to um, Enlightened Wealth Institute, went to a bunch of seminars, started listening to the podcast. Um, I don't even think there was podcast back in 08. <laughs> they actually started yeah, with Yeah, that's about when they were started, 08, 09, 10, yeah. <laughs> right? So that was later um, when I was listening to those. But I realized that um, if I wanted to live in those houses that I saw mm -hmm. um, up on the hill, I knew that they knew something different than I did, and I wanted to learn what they knew. And real estate was a, is a great vehicle to build wealth. So after all the education, um, I bought my first two rental properties. So I was uh, in Fortune Builders which is a great education platform if you don't know about it. Um, I met a good friend of mine there. He bought two properties in Memphis. I was the skeptical one. I got his 12, uh, it was uh, every month, he'd be like, hey, Randy, you getting into those, those checks yet? He's like, yeah, they're still coming in, Maureen. I'm like, okay, cool. So 12 months later, guess who bought two properties? I did. Maureen. Yeah, so I let his money vet it, and then I, then I jumped in, and I was like, oh, this thing works. Right. Okay, now guess, I was working as a pharmaceutical rep at the time. Okay. And uh, guess who I was talking to about rental real estate and how to make money? I'm sure it was the clothiers. My <laughs> you're, oh, your dad. Because you, you said you went through fortune builders, so I'm assuming oh. that those properties came through. They did, through okay. Memphis, yeah. Right. There I was, I was uh, well, funny, so funny that you mentioned that. I, was, I bought two properties from Memphis, mm -hmm. and then um, I brought so much business in because I was talking to my doctors about um, rental real estate and how right. to make money. And so they were like, Maureen, tell me more. So guess who became an affiliate? 
mm-hmm. at first. So they were buying a lot of properties through Memphis and then they wound up hiring me. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's Who, that Memphis invested? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so let's continue Let's continue with the story then. So you went to work for Memphis Invest? Yes. And then you created a competing company <laughs> um, for a four hour drive away? Well, they were gonna give me ownership, so I had to go somewhere. Right. Um, they are a great company to work for, really learned so much from them. I'm right. really, really grateful for the opportunity uh, that the clothiers afforded me to learn the business really from one of the best in the industry. Right. Um, I love their product and the, the renovation work that they do, the management style. Um, so I, I give, I'm so grateful for the opportunity there. Um, after being there for almost four and a half years, um, the, the market had started to change, the returns were not as good as they were before. And you know my investors, who are really good friends, they become very good friends because this is a long-term working relationship, sure. right? And uh, I could see that I could take their money and go to other markets that would um, provide a higher yield. So uh, this was at the time where um, I had met um, Clayton and Lindsay, and they had invited me to come check out Birmingham. Now the funny thing about this is most people, when they think of Birmingham, Alabama, there's a stigma. There's like this preconceived notion about what is in Birmingham, Alabama. Right. And to kind of use my voice to show the inflection, it was like when I got the invitation, I remember going, Birmingham, Alabama? Like, what the heck is there? Yeah. Um, but I'm a very curious type, so I thought, well, let me go check it out. You know, so I got on a plane, flew out in 2000 and, let's see, is that 13? 20? Or the end of 2012, uh, beginning of 2013, and I was so impressed with the city, and again, there's been so much growth that's happened since then, oh, yeah. but even back then, I could see what was starting to happen as the city was turning around and emerging, uh, and then I got to spend one-on-one time with, with one on one time with Lindsay, one-on-one time with Clayton. I realized that was three days, one-on-one with both of them, and I was like, they're, I would jump in their foxhole. Like, they would have my back, they operate with integrity, they've got a great product, um, they've got long-term vision, they're good family people, and I thought, I, and then, then I walked through the properties. That was the other thing. I walked through the, the renovation work. And I was looking around. I'm like, God dang, these guys are really doing a good job. From the refinished hardwood floors to the granite countertops to the brushed nickel features and hardware all throughout. Um, you know, zero carpet, uh, all new window treatments. I mean, new roofs, new HVACs, new water heaters. And I could just tell that they had something here and they just needed help growing it. Right. And so, you know, Lindsay operations, Clayton vision, uh, I call him, I affectionately say Clayton, I love you, but my, he's my nerd. He's my like ultimate super smart nerd. <laughs> okay. I love him dearly. Super smart. The guy that you want. Yes. Um, navigating your capital and getting a, getting a return on your capital. So between those two, it was just a no-brainer to jump in. So this was 2000, what, 12, 13? I think it was 13. Okay. Was it? Yeah, I don't remember exactly. So you mentioned Clayton, and Clayton was actually the second guest we ever had on the podcast. Um, Clayton and I became pretty good friends, obviously through us, um, Alabama Cash Deals, sending properties um, to you guys. Yeah. And Clayton agreed to be, he had no idea what this thing was. I'm like, hey, you want to come be a guest on this podcast? And he's like, um, I don't know. <laughs> what is it again? That sounds like him. <laughs> and so... He came and did it just as a favor to me. I had no idea what the, what was going to happen. I didn't know if we were going to do five episodes or here we are, 68. Wow, look at now, you. 68 consecutive weeks doing this thing. So, yeah, Congrats. look at this. So, that's awesome. That's a great story of how. So, you moved to Birmingham right then. No. Mm-mm. All right, so, so tell us that. Story. Okay, so here's the funny story. Now, I, I was duped a little bit, and <laughs> Lindsay, Lindsay knows this story. So, um, Lindsay's in here, by the way, <laughs> listening to all of this. That's why, she, that's why Marie keeps like looking over her shoulder. <laughs> so, um, what happened was, uh, they wanted to throw a, um, appreciation, a holiday appreciation party for everyone that helped them in their business. Now, okay. they were, they were an N of two company of two people okay. and, uh, they had already bought properties. They had them renovated. They had them tenanted. They just needed now someone to sell, to sell them. Yeah. And so they were looking for someone to help sell them. So here I was coming in. Now they timed their appreciation dinner party the same time that I'm here. And so without asking any questions, nor did they say anything, when I'm sitting in, I walk into this room in their office and it's like filled wall to wall with people. I mean like you're, you're like wall to wall having to scoot past people. 
and there was probably 40 people in the room. And I thought, wow, this company's really big. Wow, like they're really doing something down here. I was like, huh, maybe second thought, maybe I should think about joining them. So um, what I come to find out later was that they just invited everybody that they possibly could. There were people that actually helped them in the business, but it was like their real estate friends, their title work friends, their attorney friends. It was like, hey, do you have a friend? Just bring them along. We're going to have a dinner. <laughs> so it worked, and I'm glad that they did that because um, I was looking for a reason not to. And gotcha. I, I was. I was really looking for a reason not to. I was on the plane out here. I was like, the properties aren't going to be good. The neighborhoods aren't going to be good. They're not going to be good. I mean, I was, it was all, I was looking for something. And I couldn't find anything to right. say no. So three days later after the tour, when I was here with them, um, Clayton makes me the offer to join the company. And uh, it was the first time someone had ever offered me ownership in a company. And I thought, oh, yeah, this sounds awesome. And then it was, I found out later, so I, I accept, I accept it, I take the challenge, and I find out, I'm like, okay, Clayton, I'm like, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, I'm like, I'm gonna take clients off to dinner, I'm gonna have these big seminars, I'm gonna like tell everybody about it. And he's like, oh, no, 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 we don't have a marketing budget. <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean you don't have a marketing budget? He's like, no, you have, we have zero dollars for marketing. Oh, okay. And I, he's like, oh, and, and by the way, we have um, no buyers list. <laughs> oh, okay. And here you have percent ownership in a company that has zero value. Right. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I'm thinking, how am I going to do this, right? Now, I was going through a divorce at the time, three, three small kids under the age of five. Wow. And I did it. I took the leap because of, of Clayton and Lindsay right. and what I saw. And I'm glad I did because we went from, you know, the first quarter that I joined the company, I sold eight houses in wow. a, three months, right? <laughs> but, the, I mean, from zero, though. <laughs> And now we're about 60, we're averaging about 65 houses a quarter. And we've had to pump the bricks because it's, we, you got to grow at a pace that is yeah. where your construction quality doesn't slip or the customer service doesn't slip. So right. they put the brakes on me. I want to keep pushing harder to keep selling more, but right. that's why they're in the decision making yeah. position they're in versus me. <laughs> that's an awesome story. So Maureen, all of that, you, you, you still don't live here though. I don't live here. No. <laughs> I do this, and the same thing when I was in Memphis, when I was selling properties uh, in the Memphis market, I didn't live there either. And interestingly enough, um, nearly 50% of our business comes from Southern California, where I reside. Where you live. So, but everyone on the team here, we have 17 on payroll, um, everyone is here in Birmingham. Yeah. Um, I fly in once a month, that's why I'm here with you now, right? I just had a tour, like I was um, sharing right. with you earlier, we had three investors in on a tour, so I fly back once a month, Stay for four days, meet the team, or not meet the team, and, uh, interact with the team, right. get caught up on everything, um, and just keep getting more familiar with the city because this yeah. city just keeps growing at a breaknecking pace. Right. So that's a great segue. Let's talk about Birmingham. Yeah. Let's talk about the city. Um, so you've been involved in selling properties here for five years yes. plus. Um, where, if, if someone's just getting started, obviously they're going to call Spartan. Mm -hmm. But in case they want to try to do some stuff on their own and try to do a little bit of research on their own, where are some areas within Birmingham where you guys would recommend to start looking for properties to buy and hold? Perfect. So I always, I like, if I, I kind of describe Birmingham as a clock, right? So Birmingham proper is right in the center of the clock. I always tell our investors that we invest between seven and one. Okay. Right. So it's that northeast, northwestern quadrant, and also a little bit south where, you know, south west, the Kiwi Town Bessemer area. Right. We try to go where the big anchor employers are because that's what you're trying to attract is those uh, employees that are working for those um, types of large anchor employers. Um, the, three, the three key things that you need in any market, this is just not Birmingham, but the three key things that you need in any market is a stable and diverse economy. Um, you need people moving there mm -hmm. and you need jobs being created. Okay. So, when, and Birmingham has that, no, Birmingham has that in all three happening all at the same time. So I love Detroit, Detroit I love you, I know you're rebuilding, but they're a great example of, um, you know, of a city that had, was dependent on one major yes. industry. And then if something, if they falter, skin their knees, wobble a little bit, that really affects, yeah. it's like a pebble in a river, it just, totally. the effect goes widespread. And the interesting thing about that is Birmingham was like that too. Yes, it Except was. Except now, they're, they're bringing a lot of other industry. So, so what we have working for us is we've got very smart local and state government officials that really uh, have been determined to bring 
uh, rebuild, revitalize the city. The way that you do that is through creating jobs. Mm -hmm. And so the city officials were very, very smart. They went overseas uh, starting back in 2010, actually. They went overseas looking for uh, international companies that wanted to get a foothold in the United States. And how do you do that? You make a sexy business incentive tax package For sure. to get them to come move their operations. I'll think about it. If you're a billion dollar company and someone says to you, hey, move your operations and I can save you 30% on your tax bill or your operations cost. You know, and by the way, I've got a labor force that I've been, we've got training workshops and training centers around that have been, um, that are training a workforce that would be available to fill your, your auto manufacturing or aerospace manufacturing plant. Awesome. Right? Yeah. So these guys were very, very smart. They went out, they found these companies like um, Honda, Mercedes, Toyota, Mazda just announced, yeah. as you know, in January, uh, building a $1.6 billion uh, auto manufacturing plant uh, just an hour north, hour 20 minutes north of Birmingham. So you've got these large international companies that guess what? They, they build these billion dollar multi uh, faceted uh, manufacturing plants and guess what they're bringing? Jobs. Totally. And a lot of them. Yep. So, so gr obviously Birmingham's growing, and it's it's growing at well, I would say Greater Birmingham is growing mm -hmm. at, at a at a at a pretty rapid pace right now. Where should we start to actually invest? What part you said you said between seven and one? I had to draw a picture. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'll give you some cities. Because because you said between seven and one, between one and seven would be more of the retail, the hundred and fifty thousand dollar up houses, mm, yes. and that's not really conducive to the turnkey model. Not as much for cash flow purposes. So from from one to seven <laughs> or seven to one on a clock. I have to keep looking at this picture. Make sure where are these areas in particular? So we love Center Point. We love Pinson, Graysville, Chalksville, Adamsville. Uh, it's funny, Amityville just popped into my head, but that's what I, that was a scary movie that I watched years ago. <laughs> it's not here in Birmingham. There's no people. Amityville that no. I know of. <laughs> um, then uh, uh, Hueytown, Bessemer, um, we do a little bit in Sylvan Springs. Mm -hmm. So it's it's where the numbers make sense, right? Like yeah. kind of what you said, you, know, you don't want to do super, super high end yeah. um, because the cash flow is not there. You make it the appreciation, but we're doing this for cash flow. This is why people invest. Um, and you don't want to go down to, well, we don't, not that you can, but we just don't, uh, we don't like to spend time in the, the houses, you know, in the 70,000 or below range. Right. You're just in different types of neighborhoods. We like that working class, solid B, you know, median income, $50,000, hardworking, working class couple that's just, you know, getting by. So you said solid B. Because mm -hmm. I feel like this is the you most subjective thing in the world. Mm -hmm. Um, we've had people on here that, that swear that, you know, a B property is Hoover, you mm -hmm. know, and you get people on here that with the exact, there's plenty of B in, in Bessemer. Yeah. And so it just really just depends. What is a B class area as it pertains to Birmingham? Let me define that. And you, I, I would say this to your listeners as well. It's such a good, they have to clarify this on this point because a B in my mind may not be the same in yours, totally. right? And it could be vastly different. <laughs> and if someone's buying from uh, out of state, they're just really relying on you to make sure that That's it's right. a good, safe neighborhood. Yep. So for us, we define it as median income, $50,000 a year, uh, low crime rate, schools, if you go to greatschools.org, um, the rankings are between one and 10. 10 is awesome, one is the failure mill. We're in the three to six range. Okay. And no burnouts, no vacant lots. Uh, I always kind of jokingly say no stray dogs, no graffiti, no 10 cars parked in the front driveway. Or okay. And that's a B property. Yes. Is there like, is there, you know, like B minus, B plus, is there stuff like that? Or is there like the B plus, do you guys go, we go do, there? We do, yeah. When we have some, I mean, we've had this, this one property that we just sold to an investor. I loved it. It was Heather Brook. I mean, it was $130,000 property, right? So we do have those ones that are the B plus. Mm -hmm. um, this house was just gorgeous by the time we were done with it. And so, and yes, it was rented right away. Um, so, but that's not the main staple. The main staple is the rents between seven hundred and thirteen hundred dollars a month. That's where your working class can um, can afford. That keeps you in good, you know, decent school districts, um, low crime rates, easy access to freeways. Um, renters, you know, renters choose properties for three reasons: affordability, number one; proximity to work, number two; and school district, yes. really number three. Those are yeah. the. In my ten years of experience. I've heard enough conversations, leasing properties. Totally. That's what they, that's how they rent. Yeah. 
Let's talk about Spartan specifically. Yeah. Let's can we get into the numbers? Uh, yeah. Because because they're you're you're essentially selling yourself right now. You're the salesperson, <laughs> right? Um, and because there's so many people that listen to some, some of our most downloaded podcasts are the ones where we put the word turnkey in the title, and we just had you know one of your competitors on maybe you know. I think it was about four or five. Well, by the time this comes out, maybe ten episodes ago. So they, you know, everybody's selling themselves. What what makes Spartan unique and different in this area? Um, I will tell you. It really comes down to. I think you can buy a house anywhere, anytime from anybody. You can go on a Craigslist and you can find somebody trying to sell you a house, and they can sell you great returns. And I think there are markets that have um, some better returns than others. You can find great returns in some markets. Um, and every property is going to be renovated, and you have to, def, you know, see how are they just throwing cheap carpet and cheap paint, or are they putting a new metal roof, new HVAC, new water heater, granite countertops, refinished hardwood floors? What does their renovation look like? And even that's not the most important. It all comes down to the team, right? The market. We talked about that stable, diverse market. People moving in there, um, jobs being created. But it really comes down to the people that are overseeing our investors' capital and being good stewards of that capital and having strategies and processes in place to re uh, mitigate any loss of that capital. So when you're asking me what is the differentiating factor or what makes Spartan different, one, I think our renovations are just better than most people. I don't, I've been in this industry 10 years and I don't know of anybody putting granite right. on a kitchen countertop. No, in. I don't think that that's even um, debatable. Yeah. I really don't. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then it just comes down to our team. Like The reason people come out to tour with us is because they're doing that gut check. They're going, okay, wait a minute. All right, Maureen, you sound really good on the phone and you're the salesperson and there's a little bit of skepticism as they should. And I always say, believe none of what I say and verify everything that I say because everything can totally. be verifiable. Um, a great resource is the Birmingham Business Journal. Um, and for your um, listeners, you guys, there are any city that you're looking to invest in, um, it's gonna cost you anywhere from 100 to $125 to buy the, the Birmingham Business Journal, or sorry, not the Birmingham, but the any business journals, you just type in the city. Business Journal, that has, it is chock full of information from schools to the economy to politics to infrastructure to new development. Um, it's it's probably one of the best resources that anyone can use to research a city. Yeah. Um, so I would just say, the to answer your question in short, which was not short, <laughs> why Spartan is just because it's the team of people um, overseeing, their, overseeing your capital. And we have a vested interest in the long-term performance of that for sure. So you mentioned, you know, the re the the repairs, the rehabs mm -hmm. that you guys do. So I don't know if any. You just mentioned I don't know if anyone putting in granite countertops. So my question, just, just <laughs> this is my general question, like, is how how is that profitable? A and then B. <laughs> obviously, you get the rents. You get rents that I can't that we can't get. A little bit higher. Yeah. Right. Is do you attribute it to stuff like that? It's those little finer features that do help us push the rent up a little bit. Plus, we have the two full-time leasing agents that are based, uh, they are salary-based and commission. They get commission, higher commission if they get a higher rent for the property. So that is a, wow. one of our ways that we do yeah, that. Yeah, that's good to see. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, I'm going to give credit where credit is due. Um, Clayton, the researcher that he is, um, he sourced a rock quarry in Brazil and the rock quarry ships us granite directly. Um, we hold it at Alabama Stoneworks and they do the installs for us. Wow. So it was only a $200 difference from the from Micah countertops we were doing before. Really? That's it. Holy cow. So it's just a matter of finding the right source, right? Yeah. And we found it, we struck a deal, they wanted to sell us the granite, we wanted to buy it, we found someone to store it for us, they do the installs, and I'm telling you, like it's we've seen anywhere from we can get anywhere from twenty five. I've seen up to seventy five dollars more above average market rent just from some of these nicer features like the yeah. granite in our properties. That's incredible, and that's you guys definitely have to come. How can how can someone? I'm gonna ask how they can get a hold of you later, but how can someone like see pictures of some stuff that you have? You have like a website where people can see that. We're gonna do contact information at the end. <laughs> But this is, I really want you guys to go and at least check out some of these properties. We do. So the, we're having our website rebuilt right now. Um, but I have, there's, every property comes with a scope of work. So the scope of work is before and after, interior, exterior, line itemization of everything that we've done, plus, plus the total cost of the renovation. 
A lot of people, I think, hmm. when they are looking at uh, a property, a lot of times they'll go onto Zillow, right? They're doing their due diligence as they should, but they'll see, oh, Maureen, you bought a property for 70 grand, or sorry, for 30 grand, and you're selling it to me for 100. Like, that $70,000 seems like a really large spread. And uh, I say to them, you know, you there's a lot of things that you're not factoring in. It's the cost of the purchase, the cost of labor, the cost of the materials, the $10 million line of credit that we pay interest on, utilities that we have to pay, the holding costs. I mean, I can go on and, and the water liens, the tax liens, all of that stuff. The website. The website, there it is, it's up there. Let's oh, Alabama Rental Property has, Alabama Rental Property has our um, properties listed, so you can actually take a virtual tour cool. and look at all the pictures online. AlabamaRentalProperty.com is the website. Definitely go check that out because I want you guys to see some of these features. So I wanted to ask you about, um, well we talked about Birmingham, but I, there was something I wanted to get to. Um, what questions should, because you just sold us, we, we believe <laughs> we believe the Spartan is, is the best, but we still we want to go do our due diligence, maybe yeah, talk should. to some other people. Mm -hmm. What are some questions we should ask you? What are some tough questions not only to ask of you guys, but of any property management company or turnkey company that's here locally? Awesome. I, I love this question because I really love helping educate investors, especially new ones. I remember mm -hmm. when I started out, I really appreciated when people were generous with me yes. and uh, gave me some good tips. Um, and questions to ask. Um, first and foremost, you know, when you're inter when you're interviewing any kind of turnkey company, make sure they are turnkey, right? We defined that earlier. Right. So make sure that they it's full service that they do everything. If they outsource the property management, that's a little bit of a red flag potentially. Not so much a red flag. I would say that it's it's possible that that mark that model can work. I just know that for us, like truly turnkey is the way that I've defined it, and you know I'm. At the if if someone's just brokering the deal, if someone's just sort of the middleman, mm -hmm. their interest stops when the transaction yes. closes and they get their cash That's and they're right. out. They're like peace. Um, the with us, with any real turnkey provider, that long term relationship begins right at the closing table because we're gonna take most people that are doing buy and holds. They're not. They're holding the properties for at least you know five, ten, fifteen, even longer. So. We're going to have a long-term working relationship yes. here, and it's got to be good. Um, so I would say, you know, that's the first thing is, hey, do you outsource any part of your business? Yes. That would be number one. Number two is I would ask them, what's their long-term goal? Why are you building this business, right? Are you building it to sell it, or are you building it to keep it? And if you're building it to keep it, then awesome. My goals are in alignment with your goals, um, and that's exactly what we're doing here. We're building. This is our cash flow. Um, this is where we're getting our monthly cash flow through right. building the property management side of the business. Our investors are building, maybe they're acquiring you know, one to five to 10 properties for cash flow. We want 5,000 properties under management, right? We're in this for the long haul. Wow. Um, so our goals are in alignment. I would say three other really important questions are, and no one in 10 years, no one in 10 years has ever asked me this. Hey Maureen, what's your maintenance ratio? And I always think- We're about to ask you. <laughs> So um, I, I tell every investor that I coach or talk with, I'm like, ask any turnkey provider that question, and here's what you want to hear. Very specific answers. 2.1, 3.2, 4.6, whatever the number is, that's what you want to hear. Be wary if you hear, um, I think, well, it's around, it's about, uh, I'll get back to you on that because we don't know. What that tells you is that that company is not measuring that metric. Mm -hmm. And if they're not measuring that metric, how do they have any process or system in place to protect your capital? Mm -hmm. Especially when you close, how much is that property gonna cost you in maintenance afterwards? That's what we're measuring, mm -hmm. right? So um, our current maintenance ratio right now is 3.1%. Okay, well, so, what, does, what does that mean? Break that down, 3.1% of what? So I always say, you know when you get a pro forma, and it says um, maintenance, 4%, 5%. It's basically they're saying take 4% of, of your gross. annual gross rent and set it aside as a reserve for maintenance because you are going to have a maintenance bill mm -hmm. at some point. And you want to have the capital there or the cash there to, totally. to, to, to fix it. So if someone says to you, um, oh, our maintenance ratio is 5%, but they show 4% on the pro forma, that should tell you as an investor, well, wait a minute. 
that means my return that you're showing me is going to be less than what I'm actually getting. Right. Because, you know, you're showing me that your maintenance ratio is higher. But what if their maintenance ratio is lower, right? Does that mean that if ours is 3.1 out of 600, or we've got 617 properties under management right wow. now, right? So if it's 3.1, then why is it so low? Well, because we put the new roof, the new HVAC, the new water heater, no That's carpet, right. right? That's what you're looking for. You're trying to dig into their way that they manage. Do they have the metrics? Do they have the numbers? Do they make sense? Are they believable, right? Yeah. <laughs> Um, no, that's huge. And what, so have you guys gone back and looked at the data to where, because you send out pro formas, I'm, ass, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. of what it's projected to look like. Yes. What the numbers are projected to look like versus what they actually are in the first year, first two years. Do you guys do stuff like that and see how close you were and maybe adjust your pro formas? We, well, so we actually do it kind of, we reverse engineer it, I suppose, right? Um, we always give, we built, we built, how about I want to say conservation, but we're very conservative in our projections, right? So if I know I can rent a property for 950, I'm advertising it and marketing on the pro forma for 925, hmm. right? So it's more often times than not, we're actually getting a higher rent than what the investor expects. Mm -hmm. It's an under, uh, over, no, under promise, over deliver, yep. let's get that wrong. Yep. Um, and that's why we have two full-time leasing agents that are competing, right. right, with each other, one to rent the properties, and yeah. then two, if they get a higher rent, they get a little bigger bonus. For sure. So there's a care, everyone needs a little carrot to perform. And these gals, these gals work really, really hard for us. They're phenomenal at getting the properties rented. Um, with the nicer finishes, you know, when most renters are used to walking in and seeing, you know, the white counter, the white small square countertop or the Formica that has the burn marks or the chips, you know, like they're used to seeing those types of things. And when you walk in and see granite, you just kind of see their eyes, especially the ladies, their eyes pop a little yeah. bit, like they get excited. Like, have they ever seen anything like that before in a rental property um, before? They just never have. Right. So um, I kind of feel like I went off on a tangent there. No. Get back to your question. <laughs> no, I think no. I, I really just wanted to dig into some numbers, allow you guys to sell yourselves a little bit more. Oh, okay. What are some other numbers, some other metrics that we should be um, gauging? Um, your eviction oh. rate, um, stuff like that. Your uh, how long does it take for you to? Get another tenant in, whatever that's called. All really important, yeah. It's all really important numbers. So I'll start with our eviction rate. Um, unfortunately, evictions do happen. We're running a 1.01% percent eviction rate right now. Um, you know, as you get larger, it's probably the number's going to get bigger um, just by sheer volume. But so what does that mean? One percent, so one out of every hundred per year. Is that how that works? How does that work exactly? She's looking. She's looking for <laughs> someone else to help them out with that. It's current. So as of right now, we have one percent. We can't hear you, Lindsay. But it's so current. It's current. So one percent of our prop of our current portfolio is in eviction. Oh, I see. So one percent of the current portfolio. So that means out of six hundred properties, you have six evictions going on right now. Right. Is that, I don't know if that's good or That is correct, yeah. <laughs> A lot of six hundred properties, I think that's pretty good, right? I mean, you evictions are going to happen because sure. you know people break up people lose their job yeah. it's just kind of life stuff that we can't predict it's something that the investor needs to be prepared for definitely. but you definitely want to have it on the lower percentage versus on a higher right. percentage um, again it's it's your capital right if he, Brian you're an investor you come to me and you say hey Maureen I want to invest in this property and the way that I look at it is yeah it's the, it's a house but you're really buying the, the revenue stream that's what you're buying. You're buying the cash totally. flow through the house. Of course. And so when you give me your, you know, if it's a hundred thousand dollar house and you're putting 20, uh, 20 percent down, you're like, Maureen, here's my twenty grand. What are you gonna do for me? And it's like, okay, here's what I'm gonna do. Um, statistically, Brian, my uh, eviction rate is low, one point zero one percent. My uh, maintenance ratio is three point one percent. My time to rent thirty three days from new construction. My turnover time, basically from when a tenant moves out right. to when a new tenant moves in, we're at 44 days. Um, and the move out cost, what's the move out, what's the turnover cost? It's 1528, right? It's 1528. So um, average security. That's the average turnover cost? Mm -hmm. That seems really low. And, so, and then it's our low. security deposit's $1,000 that we take. So a lot of the that cost is, is covered by the security deposit. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Those, those seem like really good numbers. We know them because they, it's our business. <laughs> they seem a little too good to be true, Maureen. <laughs> That's what people think, but you know, it's like, I have, Lindsay, Clayton, I, the team, we all have a vested interest in the For way sure. this performs, and there's high accountability. I mean, you have accountability, you have profitability. Um, if you're letting things slip and not watching people do what they're supposed to do, then you have holes in your business. 
Um, are we perfect? No. Do we skin our knees? Yes. But we're one of the things, we're one of the companies that does the right thing. And, you know, people can check out, um, there's a lot of online sources now, and there's a lot of people, if they're happy or unhappy, you know, will on Bigger Pockets or another forum, you know, let people know what's going on. Yeah. And uh, we get a lot of people finding us through positive feedback online that they found in, in the public forum. <laughs> So Maureen, you talked about all these great numbers, and so you kind of, and I already know the answer to this before I ask you, but, <laughs> but you're kind of making me want to move some of my current properties over to you guys to manage for me. Is that a service that you offer? <laughs> so I get this question a lot, and we just turned down somebody that came to us and offered us 200 properties. They wanted us to take over their 200 properties. And the challenge with that with us is, one, we didn't do the renovation on those 200. I have no idea what's inside that 200. I don't know the types of tenants that are in the 200 or how it's performing. And then all of a sudden, if I accept that responsibility, then I have to make that, I have to make someone else's work, which I don't know how well they did it, right. try to work with us. You're gonna hold me to higher, you're gonna hold me to the standards that we hold ourselves. And it may be difficult to do because of the unknowns. So usually we do not. Usually. We usually so there's so do there's not. a chance. <laughs> you sound like you sound We're like getting no's <laughs> from from everyone else. Wait a minute. You, wait, what's that movie where um he said? You're telling me there's a chance. chance. <laughs> yeah. You said usually. Yeah. That implies that, that not my, every time. That was my nice way of saying no. Probably not. No. So um, okay. I already knew the answer to that, but I thought I'd throw that out there anyway. So what if, and I already know the answer to this too, it's no, but I'm going to throw another one. All right, let's throw it at me. What if I give you a property that needs rehabbed? Maybe not a full rehab, but it needs a little bit of work, mm -hmm. and there's no tenant in it, and I hand it to you. And I want you to do the rehab with your crew, and I want you to, and I'll pay whatever it costs, and I want you guys to manage it from that point forward. Usually no, I would say, but I, I do sometimes take it up if I if I could go, is it something, if it's, first of all, it's got to be in the zip codes that we sure, do business of course, in, right? So of it's course. not going to be in an area that we don't do business. Um, usually if, I, if I'm feeling inspired for you, like if I really like you, I want to go to bat for you, then I'm going to go to the other two right. and say, hey, um, hey, this is the situation, are we willing to do this? All right, well, let's be clear, though. Has that ever happened, ever? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, they on. say no. They say no. I'm trying, man. <laughs> well, Maureen, thank you so much for coming on our show. I want to give you an opportunity to um, tell people how they can get a hold of you. Maybe there's somebody listening. We get our second most downloads come from California. So, obviously, people, the only reason people would be listening to this from out of state is if they were looking for properties. Mm hmm so tell people how they could get a hold of you and potentially um, look up what Spartan has to offer and maybe even come out here and do a tour with you. God, I would love them to do that tour. So um, there's a variety of ways to get a hold of me. So um, of course there's our website, spartaninvest.com. Um, I'm actually going to go out on a limb here and leave my cell phone number. Could you imagine? That's the bat line. What? That's the bat line, right? If you need me, here's how so, you get a hold so of me. So I gave you all the good people that <laughs> potentially might be listening. We must, might also have like a lot of uh, crazy people. It's, it's up to you. Uh, I'll be like, um, block, block those calls. Now, so, um, yeah, so my, my mobile seven six zero six four four zero one nine four, And then best way to is also my email, which is um, lots of double consonants in my email, but it's Maury, it's M McCann at Spartan Invest, M M C C A N N at SpartanInvest.com. We'll put all that in the show notes. So if you're driving down the road right now, don't, don't feel like you got to kill yourself to get a pin. Don't try to text and drive. Don't do that. Um, we'll put all that in the show notes. And, and also I want to give you another chance to brag on yourselves and brag on Spartan. You guys have been recognized, I know, in some magazines and this and that. Tell people also what's been going on. Because we want to know from a, because you're in Birmingham. Yes. And we want to know what's going on with Birmingham businesses. So. Oh, gosh. Thank you so much. Um, I, I'll take an opportunity here to toot our own horn. There you go. <laughs> so um, we've accomplished a lot of things in a very short period of time. Very, very difficult to make the Inc. 500 and the Inc. 5000 list. Um, we've made it four years in a row. That's incredible. Thank you. What is that, by the way, for people that don't know? So it's uh, the fastest growing companies in America. Um, you have to beat each year um, your percent growth each year. So it's 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 not an easy thing to do, especially I mean the first year kind of easy to get. Man, it just gets harder and harder because you've got to have exponential growth from the year before. That's right. It's very very tough to do. 
Um, and only I think only eight percent of companies that actually apply make the list because there's it's only it's five the first five thousand companies in the United States that's fastest growing. So they have thousands of applications. Um, so it's been really really an honor to make that uh, to make that list four times in a row. Um, we've been on the uh, best places to work list that's cool. uh, in Birmingham. And then also one of the fastest growing companies in the top three in Birmingham for the last four years as well. That's very cool. Spartan Invest, go to the show notes and, and uh, see how you can get a hold of this awesome team that's right here in our neck of the woods in Birmingham. Guys, I say it every time. Hit that subscribe button and rate us and review us. We love you so much, and we'll see you next time. That's it. That's it. Yay! <laughs> Is that fun? That was fun. I'm so happy. You did so good. That's what I do, girl, all day long. <laughs> in about a year, we'll we'll get Lindsay on here. <laughs> Will she come in? Will you come in? Of course. She's, she's entertaining. She's much more entertaining than I am. Ooh. Yeah. No. Uh huh. That's inaccurate. <laughs> if you don't mind, give me just one second. Yeah. I just want to make sure I don't lose this. Yeah. One time I didn't do this right away. And You're so funny. Like, here's my cell, my home address. Yeah. Is. <laughs> I need a date. Yeah, Anybody want a one eight hundred? Come on in, come see me. <laughs> Thanks for letting us come, Brian. This is cool. Yeah, yeah. This is fun stuff. I mean, it's just Maureen probably thought we were crazy. Like, what? You're going to Alleria? We want to go. Mm -hmm. I was like, let me meet this guy, Brian. I've been talking to him. It's like we should know him. He's in. He's in our backyard. Like, what's going on? <laughs> well, Brian sends his house. Was that? No, thank you. Yeah, I was telling her you sent his house. I'm trying to go look at. Yeah, Maureen didn't know that we worked with y'all. I didn't know. Work with yeah. Or we uh -huh. with you. See, when you're out of the office, you, like, miss some things, right? Yeah. And then I don't know how you and I got connected on Facebook, but I was just watching your lives Maureen's and listening to your videos. I'm kind of a stalker, so Are I'm you stalking really? you, yeah. <laughs> we, hopefully we're not hard to find. No, you're not. But I just can't remember even how we got connected, and then um, maybe I think I, I saw that you were on a podcast, and I was like, you were on another podcast. Yeah. yeah. And I was like... I haven't had Spartan on since the very, very beginning. Let's get someone else from Spartan to come on. Well, thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. Really excited to, to yeah. be here and just and to. I want to come. I've never. I always have my kids on Thursday, so I don't know how I can make this happen. But if they're gone yeah. or something, I'd love to be here for the come on. Korea and yeah. Um,